the insane sex lives of white plantation mistresses. Way back in the early 19th century, there was a big fancy plantation down in the south. But what made this plantation special was the lady in charge. She was a real powerhouse, the queen bee of the place. This lady had a knack for bossing everyone around, especially those poor enslaved folks working the fields. She was like the boss of all bosses, the ultimate supervisor. Nobody dared to cross her because she had a whip-smart authority about her. But here's the catch. This plantation was a place filled with sadness and suffering. The lady, despite her power, didn't use it for good. She used it to make life miserable for those enslaved people. It was like living in a never-ending nightmare. Lonely Mistress's Date, 1820. In the steamy world of southern plantations, being a white plantation mistress was like being a bored cat in a room full of mice. Picture this. It's 1820, and our mistresses are lounging around, sipping sweet tea and fanning themselves like their lives depended on it. Spoiler alert, they kind of did. Now, these mistresses might have had big fancy houses and dresses that could probably house a small family, but guess what? They were bored out of their minds. See, they were stuck in these big, beautiful houses. But what good is a mansion when you're as lonely as a cucumber at a fruit party? You see, their husbands were off doing who knows what, probably counting their cotton bales or something. And that left the mistresses twiddling their thumbs, wondering what in tarnation to do with themselves. Gossiping with the other bored ladies just wasn't cutting it anymore. But wait, there's drama brewing. It turns out, when husbands are away, some of them stray. Adultery and infidelity were on the menu. These mistresses were like, if he can have his fun, why can't I? And just like that, the stage was set for some spicy secrets. The Unveiling of Desires. Date, 1830. As the years passed, they got fed up with sewing, piano lessons, and sipping tea with other high-society ladies who could talk about nothing more exciting than the weather. They were thirstier for adventure than a cowboy in the desert. And so, they turned their attention to the slaves. Now, don't get me wrong. This wasn't some grand awakening of social justice. No, no, it was more like they discovered a forbidden fruit tree in their backyard and couldn't resist taking a juicy bite. These mistresses started to explore their own desires, desires they didn't dare whisper in polite company. It was like a secret club, but instead of a secret handshake, they had secret rendezvous with the slaves. The tension built like a balloon being filled with helium, and you just knew it was going to pop. Harriet Jacobs, one brave woman who'd been through it all, gave us an insider's peek into these secrets. She told us about the hidden world where these desires simmered just below the surface. Picture it. A grand plantation house with beautiful but frustrated women and a group of slaves working tirelessly under their watchful eyes. You could cut the tension with a butter knife. But hold on to your bonnets, because this is just the beginning of a story that's about to get hotter than a skillet sizzling with bacon. The Forbidden Affairs Date, 1835. Love, secrets, and the big plantation oopsie. Here we are, smack dab in the middle of the 1830s, and things on the southern plantation are getting juicier than a ripe Georgia peach. We're about to spill the sweet tea on some seriously forbidden affairs, y'all. Picture this, a steamy, sultry afternoon, the sun beating down on the cotton fields and a group of plantation mistresses who are just plain tired of sipping mint juleps and pretending to be ladies. These women, bored out of their bonnets and yearning for some excitement, have found themselves in a bit of a romantic pickle. Now, these white mistresses have their eyes on something they shouldn't. They're dark-skinned slaves. Yep, you heard it right. There's some hanky-panky going on behind the magnolia bushes that would make Scarlet O'Hara blush like a beet. You see, these mistresses are feeling lonely and unloved in their fancy antebellum gowns. Their husbands are off gallivanting with other women, and these women, they want more than just a cup of afternoon tea. They want some romance, some adventure, and they've set their sights on their own forbidden fruit, the enslaved men. As the sun sets, passions ignite. 
these mistresses and their slaves begin secret rendezvous in the moonlit fields under the cover of Spanish moss and the stars. It's like something straight out of a scandalous southern novel, but oh, there's a twist as sharp as a cactus thorn. These affairs come with consequences as big as a Mississippi riverboat. You see, there's the looming threat of mixed-race children, and in the pre-Civil War South, that's about as scandalous as a chicken in a fox's den. Society would have a conniption fit if they found out. As we approach the climax of our tale, one mistress finds herself in quite the predicament. She's pregnant, and she's not the only one. The plantation is buzzing with secrets and rumours, and like a pot of gumbo, it's about to boil over. Male Victims and Power Play Date, 1845. You see, these mistresses, with all their crinolines and frilly doodads, had some peculiar ways of asserting their dominance. They weren't just running the show in the big house. They were running a secret carnival of desires in the shadows. Now, imagine a world where the roles were flipped, and it's not the men, but the women calling the shots. It's like a reverse square dance, where the ladies are leading every twirl and do see do And oh boy, those dark-skinned slaves were caught up in a whirlwind of emotions. These mistresses were like puppet masters, pulling the strings of attraction, power and secrets. They were mixing up a potent cocktail of control and desire, and everyone was sipping from it. As the southern sun bore down, these relationships between mistresses and male slaves became a real-life soap opera. Think Gone with the Wind meets Days of Our Lives. There were stolen glances, hushed whispers and clandestine rendezvous in the cotton fields. And let's not forget the passionate confessions under moonlit magnolia trees. The mistresses had the power and they knew it. But hold your horses, dear readers, because this power play came with its own set of complications. There was the constant fear of discovery, the ever-present threat of societal consequences, and the looming spectre of mixed-race children. It was like trying to balance a stack of hay on a pitchfork during a hurricane. Now, just when you thought this story couldn't get any wilder, here's the kicker. One of these mistresses ended up pregnant. Yep. You read that right. A twist of fate that sent shockwaves through the plantation like a lightning strike. Can you imagine the gossip around the washboards and corn husks? As we leave 1845 behind, remember this. Power is a tricky thing. And when you mix it with desire, it's like juggling flaming torches in a windstorm. These mistresses were playing a high-stakes game, and the chips were not just falling where they may. They were setting the whole darn table on fire. Unraveling the web date, 1850. The mistresses, those women of power on the southern plantations, begin to confront the unsettling reality of their own actions. The air is thick with the weight of secrets, and the whispers of despair can be heard among the enslaved souls who have suffered for so long. The mistresses, they're not innocent. They've become entangled in a web of sexual abuse and violence against the enslaved people they oversee. The power dynamics at play here are dark and sinister. White women, who society deems as virtuous and pure, have twisted the perceptions of those around them to their advantage. They wielded a terrible power over the lives of those they saw as beneath them. But as the years have passed, the truth is beginning to seep through the cracks in this terrible facade. The mistresses can no longer ignore the cries of their own conscience or the reality of the pain they've inflicted. They hear the stories of abuse and violence. They see the scars on the bodies of those they've wronged. Yet, despite this growing awareness, many of them remain complicit. They continue to uphold the racial hierarchies that have allowed them to maintain their power. It's a mindset deeply ingrained in their society, and they're not yet ready to let go of it. The Echoes of Rebellion. Date, 1855. Slowly but surely, a social consciousness begins to awaken among some of the mistresses. They can no longer ignore the glaring injustices that surround them. The power they once wielded with impunity is slipping through their fingers, and they're starting to question the morality of their actions. These mistresses are not villains in the traditional sense. They are products of their time, shaped by a society that normalized the subjugation of others. 
But as history marches forward, they find themselves at a crossroads. They must decide whether to cling to the old ways or to embrace change. The tension is palpable as historical events unfold, pushing the mistresses further towards the precipice of change. They can feel the ground shifting beneath them, and they know that they can no longer remain passive observers in this unfolding drama. And just like that, that's it from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.